outreach areas uh, along Kwekwe. It is public secret that Mr. Mnangagwa owns virtually all gold mines in Kwekwe. And it is with infamous, which is infamously referred as the Mu, whereby his cartel collects 50% from illegal gold panners in Makorokoza. Even one of Mnangagwa's ministers, Owen Mudanue, was one of the Mnangagwa's frontmen in extorting a gold panners and was rewarded with a ministerial post. That is the greatest form of corruption that can never be left out when you talk of corruption in Zimbabwe. Mr. Mnangagwa, in partnership uh, with a Chinese national, is also the sole exporter of chrome in Zimbabwe. And as such, it is mind-boggling to blindly, blindly exempt him from the list of corrupt people in Zimbabwe. Virtually everyone in Mnangagwa's presidium is thinking with corruption. We all know about the clandestine operations of the military under the command of none other than Constantino Guvej Wenga in the Marange area using a Kamban engine to sanitize the diamond looting in that area. Kembo Mohad too is not a saint. Mohad has multiple farms in Bainbridge and Mateke area. Yet the same people talk of one man, one farm. That is quite uh, disturbing. What of Mohad's abuse to the ZRP in his nasty fall Chipanga was fronting at the political factional battles. In this case, again, we believe it's another factional battle that is being fronted uh, using the young people as the political pawns. To us, we believe that a genuine fight for corruption can never be talked about by people who are unpaved. For they are a political party which is corrupt in its totality. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to ask for three questions from the members of the 40 state with regards to the president. Any? This is Fadi Mafumo. I'm from Zimon Post. Uh, I understand Kuti, the list Yagapi or Louis Matutu um, saw a couple of press statements. It's the Zanapir list, and he was directing to Zanapir members. So I wanted to know on what basis would the MDC in the assembly uh, react to this? Because uh, just before Congress, ZANPF was saying uh, was trying to intervene into MDC politics, and you shunned them. And now it's them they are paging themselves. On what basis are you intervening? Is it isn't it also a way of you meddling into ZANPF politics? That's my first question. Uh, then my second question is: Why are you attacking ZANPF? Because we know. Even in MDC, there are a lot of corrupt officials, especially in the councils. Why is it, why is it that you are not taking this opportunity to address uh, corruption in MDC? Because they also mentioned that there are some corrupt MDC officials, but they were not going to name them because they are not part of Zanpia. So on what basis and why are you not naming and shaming corrupt officials in the MDC because they are well known and they are public. Those are my questions. Uh, we've talked of uh, Zach's uh, incapacity. You've talked of Zach's incapacity. You say that uh, it is not capable of dealing with corruption, the police. So what, what's, what's next? We have the list already and uh, you, are, you have just commented on it. What's next to deal with corruption? What is your, your, your solution? Third question. Okay, uh, you have to a code for unity of purpose, uh, especially in terms of um, fighting corruption as well as uh, addressing the, the economic rules of the country. Uh, they also invited uh, stakeholders like you uh, or other parties like you to, to come on the table and, and, um, and uh, bring solutions to, to the country or what was your response to the invite and what, what, what solutions do we have uh, for? For, for Zimbabwe, yes, yes, young people. Okay. Okay. For three questions that have come. First, I will start with uh, you, comrade. Say, your name is Fanny. Yes. Okay, you have raised two questions that I want to respond to you. 
The first one was you questioning us on why we are commenting on things that have happened in Zanbek. I, I think I also need to correct you before I respond to you. Some of the names that are cited there are not only members of Zanbek, but also have a stake in the government of this country. We have cabinet ministers who have been implicated. So that affects every citizen. The cabinet that you don't recognize is MDC. I'm coming there, comrade. What, what I'm simply saying, comrade, is that the names that I've been mentioned, we can talk of those who are in cabinet. And we can also talk of individuals who are operating in the Great Millers Association. Those institutions affect the day-to-day -day operation of every Zimbabwe. So we cannot leave any issues to do with corruption because it has been done by an individual. The effects of corruption affect every Zimbabwe citizen. Therefore, as a party which has always been sending a clear message to say we are dealing with ZANU-PF, which is a corrupt institution which needs to be taken outside the governance of this country, this is the reason why we are saying we cannot remain silent when corruption is still rife. If anything, we are actually excited that a realization has also come from our uh, friends in ZANU-PF. We have been saying ZANU-PF is corrupt since 1999 at the formation of this party. They have never read on the same script or rather on the same page with us. And we are happy that 20 years later, they now realize that the corruption has also grown big to an extent that even those who are corrupt also accept that they are corrupt. This is the case of uh, people admitting that some are corrupt way better than them. So we are saying we cannot be silent as a country. And we have never been silent when it comes to corruption. We have said corruption is bad. We have condemned corruption and we still condemn it today. It doesn't matter who does it. What matters is to bring an end to corruption. Like what I've told you earlier on, corruption affects you, no matter who does it, who conducts it, where and how. Corruption is bad, it needs no space in the government of this country. Then you also said, are we then not uh, meddling into Zanupia's politics? We are really saying, of the list that has been uh, produced by one matu, it's not sufficient in the fact that it leaves other corrupt individuals who are even way corrupt than those who have been mentioned. ZANU-PF is corrupt in its totality. You cannot talk of corruption by an individual in ZANU-PF and leaving the other. Because this is the culture. They've been surviving in corruption. Actually, they are staying in power through corruption. I've told you a good scenario. They're in power today through corruption because one of the biggest corrupt activities is, to, is the continued uh, governance of Emerson Nangaba. Is there through a corrupt mechanism? Because the rigging an election in itself is corruption. So what you are simply saying as a part, as a youth assembly, is that corruption runs through the DNA of Zanupia. Then my comrades asked me about what's next. It's a, it's a clear case of a, a new governance culture in Zimbabwe. ZANU-PF has dismally failed over these years. And you can never think that ZANU-PF can address corruption because they are the architectures of corruption. So to bring an end to corruption, we need a new governance culture. And we are ready as a party to provide new leadership that is corrupt-free. So the way forward uh, is to ensure that Zimbabwe is blessed enough with a new governance culture led by MDC. We are a party that values and respects uh, the human life. And uh, when corruption is taking place, it's actually a sign of disrespect to the human life because corruption kills. And as a party, we cannot allow corruption to be taking place uh, in this country. This is why we are saying, going forward, we need a new governance culture. And you are ready to be providing that leadership, which is corrupt-free. Emerson Nangagwa and his cabal, like what I said earlier on, does not deserve to be leading this country. They are staying there in power through a corrupt mechanism. So we are saying the way forward is to ensure that we pave way to new leadership led by none other than Advocate Nelson Chamisa. Under an MTC government, which we are bringing very soon, we will never talk of corruption. Then the last question was from you, comrade. You said ZANU-PF has been calling for unit of purpose. As a party, we have no problem with unit. But to unite with people who are genuine, I think there's been a talk of dialogue in the past. As a party, we are clear that we have no challenges with dialogue if it's to happen. But what we need to address, which is the fundamental person, the issues of unit of purpose and dialogue are actually symptoms. We are failing to address the cause. The challenges that we are facing here as a country are challenges due to the legitimacy of the people in power. Emerson Nangagwa is not a legitimate leader, government. So we cannot talk 
of someone who's not legitimate calling others or rather inviting others for a unit of purpose. You cannot unite with someone who cannot be united with. Emerson Munangagwa has refused to bring people of Zimbabwe together by him allowing himself to run a country under rigged mechanism. You cannot unite people with the, in that regard. Because remember when we went to the election, our president, Advocate Nelson Chamisa, won the election with 2.6 million votes. And for Munangagwa, he believed that he won the election and is failing to recognize the victory of the people of Zimbabwe. So you cannot unite people who are angry with you. The people of Zimbabwe are angry. And their anger is being directed to Emerson Nangaga, who rigged an election. So unit of purpose, yes, is a good thing because it allows the country to move forward. But the person calling for unit is no local standard again to call for unit. Because there is no a moral authority to be calling for unit. We have to address the fundamental question, the question of legitimacy. People need to accept the reality that the president who was elected by the people of Zimbabwe is advocate Nelson Chamisa. For as long as we don't address that legitimacy question, everything else becomes unnecessary. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, maybe we can take another... There's another one that we left out. The one uh, uh, corrupt, I corrupt talked team. about corrupt officials in MDC. You haven't named them. Well, it's actually interesting that you are more knowledgeable about MDC than us, the people in MDC themselves. Because it, 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 mean that, it did mean that we have those who are corrupt. As a part, I've told you, we are a, 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 a corrupt free party. We don't condone corruption. We actually condemn corruption. So if we have them, we could have. And I, I think our record is quite clear as a party. In 2013, we had cases of some corrupt councillors. Yes. They were suspended. So if you have clear cases of corruption in this part, you will never live for the next hour. That is our culture. This is why we are different from Zanupi. In Zanupi, we have actually are paid for not being corrupt enough. But in MDC, we don't have that culture. We don't tolerate corruption. This is the difference which we have with other parties. Thank you, Governor. Recently, a youth stakeholder by the name Tajamuka gave President Nangaba an ultimatum. And you previously, recently as well, you were calling for protest. How do you find a common ground with that group? We, we, we find common ground with them because they are also Zimbabweans. We are all Zimbabweans and we are united by the same fate of suffering. We are suffering under the governance of a failed uh, individual who is leading a government by the name of Emerson Nangaba. So if anyone is angry, and anyone decides to express his anger through a certain action, of course we are united because those are the same issues that we are addressing. We are addressing issues to do with the illegitimacy of Emerson Munangagwa. Everyone here in Zimbabwe, wherever you go, knows that our suffering is actually a product of Emerson Munangagwa's hands. So we have by saying Emerson Munangagwa must go. Well, of course, who are we to say you must not call for, for him to go? When we are fighting for the same cause, we have been united by the same challenges. So what unites us, it is the suffering that we are facing as the people of Zimbabwe. Thank you. Uh, since we already have one question from the comrades, let us have the two last questions that are pending. Hey, comrade. Uh, one year after elections, and we are still talking about legitimacy in the, uh, four years ago. Uh, will this continue, will the, will the legitimacy mantra uh, continue uh, being your, uh, your trust, because uh, I think uh, taking it from a school of thought, I think that uh, we, we have ignored real issues and we, are, we, are, we, we can't move uh, beyond the legitimacy. Uh, well, what's your take on that? My, 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 my good comrade, you cannot talk of any other issue that is more important than legitimacy. Everything else that you are facing as a nation, any problem that you are facing today, the fact that your phone does not have a full bad. It's emanating from the legitimate question. Well, there's no electricity. The fact that you come today, you cannot spend the same money that you're spending on lunch, it's a legitimate question. The economy is shaking. The economic conditions are harsh, biting everyone. This is a legitimate question. Yet deep in that, you have a legitimate government. All the issues that we are facing, or rather the challenge that we are facing, were going to be easily addressed. But because we have someone who's told the people's victim, with no capacity. It's, um, it's like someone who steals a vehicle when he can't even know how to 
spiritual ignition key. This is the case with Emerson Nagaga. He told the people's victory, but he's, no, he's clueless with regards to the governance of this country. This is why we are suffering. So to address any other challenge, you can talk of fuel shortages. To address them, we need to return to legitimacy. You can talk of uh, price increases. To address those challenges, we need to return to legitimacy. You cannot address economic challenges without address addressing legitimacy. I've told you earlier on that anything else that you can talk about will become a symptom rather than the cause. The cause is taken from the previous election. We cannot move forward as a nation without addressing the issues of legitimacy. Whatever that you wish to see happening in a positive manner, it cannot move positively without addressing the issues of legitimacy. So yes, my brother, we will not remain, we will not be silenced. We are going to speak on the legitimacy question up until the issue is addressed. Is a follow-up, but and the other thing that you have also cited that I want to correct you. You said it's four years to go to the election. Why are you so sure? You can't be prophetic. As a party, you won't wait up until 2023. It's too far because we want to save the people of Zimbabwe. You can see the suffering of the, the Zimbabweans. We cannot remain silent because people will die one by one in no particular order. People are stressed. People are hungry. The health care is poor. So you say we should wait for 2023 when the country is burning. No, we are not going to do that. As a party, you are going to take action. Now, we can't wait for 2023. That needs to be taken rightly. And we are going to do that. And that will be unconstitutional. Because the constitution says that the elections after five years. <laughs> I've always told people whenever they ask me about that question. People power is always mightier than people in power, comrade. It's actually constitutional to demonstrate. This is why we are saying we are going to take action. Mass action is going to be something that we are going to conduct as a party. We are not going to go, oh, I mean, we are not going to fold our hands when the people are suffering. We will not fold our hands when the people of Zimbabwe are oppressed. We are going to take action, exercise our cause. The same constitution that you are referring to, we are going to obey as an individual. It's about the spirit, the spirit to bring change to the people of Zimbabwe, the spirit to give birth to democracy who still motivate each and every person to fight on, even in the absence of any individual. And then just as a follow-up, let's say you do succeed in mass protests uh, in the near future, before, before the completion of uh, President Emerson Nangagwa's term, and the people manage to, to remove him from power. Is that a coup? No, it's not a coup. It's an exercise of a democratic right that, that would have pressured an individual to admit that I cannot continue because I'm not capable. That's what they do. Uh, thank you, members of the 40th state, for gracing our press conference. Once again, thank you.